are at Lenstensia Primary School and this is the place that, uh, you know, by God's grace, uh, we were given by the, uh, the, the executive of the school uh, to start our formal services on Sundays. And I think if my memory serves me well, it was January, either the third or the, the fourth or the fifth, uh, 2003, yeah. came to Pretoria East as a family. We settled in Moikliof. And um, two, three years later, uh, my daughter was attending here. And I happened to have been elected as a member of the governing body. And I must say and emphasize that uh, we received the grace of God, the favor of God, through the people here. Uh, I just shared with the executive of the school what uh, God has laid into my heart. And they just said, no, 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 no. If you need a place to fellowship a church, and you can come and use the school hall. And that's how we came to the school hall. It was just a favor of God. It was just the grace of God. And uh, the, the biggest challenge of that was, this is a school. And we had to bring in our instruments every Sunday here. Uh, every, not necessarily every Sunday, but Friday, Saturday for practices as well and so forth. Then here was one of the challenges. As a school, they would have activities uh, over the weekend. And when we come over here, uh, before we start with, uh, with, with, with our, our services, we had to clean this wall, clean it literally, uh, kneel down, scrap it, and, and, and when one finishes, you get into your Sunday clothes, and then you go to pulpit and preach. But that was a challenge for almost six years that we have spent in this school. Uh, but all in all, we saw the hand of the Lord. We, we, we were even able to sort of accumulate, save, uh, whatever that we could do uh, by His grace. And that gave us sort of a kickstart for the venue that we are in now uh, in Moikluf. This is the packing that we use to pack our cars and the instruments as well here. And we would take them out through this path 
to the door here into the hall uh, for our services. So the days of packing and unpacking in Glenstensia, um, very interesting time. And I think your first take towards it is, is not one where you're thinking you want to gain anything out of it except for the fact that you're applying labor. But in that time, I think that's where we cultivated a lot of the relationships that we have with the people. So people would come through on the Saturday and most of the time, that's the time where you start meeting up, knowing people, getting to learn people. But also you get to, the, you get to understand the dynamics as well of serving. You get, to, you get revelations, strange enough. I found a lot of revelations in serving during that period. Because when you give yourself to the Lord in those spaces, if you give yourself into the places that he's called you to, he does his work on you. Um, so a lot of relationships was established in there and I think that's where we started forming a lot of bonds with friends um, and some friends became family and, and strangers even became friends. And I think in that time I learned and I saw that dedicating time to the work of the Lord in any sphere um, um, is never gone to waste. I think when you're younger you only see dedicating time to the Lord as being on the worship team you know, or being in, in front of the pulpit doing offering or giving a sermon. But the fact that we showed up, you know, those two days without fail to serve the Lord, that in itself was a ministry. And so many of us grew from that ministry where it made it so easy for us to actually live out the whole point of being a servant. Um, I remember very well when we were still at uh, Glenstensia at the school, um, Saturdays, um, the trailer would come with the instruments. We didn't have a permanent setup because we were using the school hall. So every Saturday, we would unpack the trailer, take the sound into the church, set up the sound, do sound check. Um, then the worship team would do their thing. And then we'd repeat again on Sunday after the service, Everyone comes together, we unpack the sound, pack it back into the trailer. It was quite a heavy, uh, I would say, activity in the sense that the gear was very heavy. You can imagine trying to pick up bass bins and the speakers twice on a weekend. So it was a, it, it was a, I would say it was a task that uh, required dedication. And uh, luckily enough, we had a, 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 a group of dedicated young men back in the days that would come in without fail Saturday and Sunday. Uh, I remember quite fondly, there is a guy that we ended up calling Snake Man, Snake Man. Uh, that comes from, he was the best when it came to um, packing the snake cable. Snake cable is a very heavy cable. He would do that in less than a minute. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we had a group of dedicated people. That's all I can say. And yeah, that made the church go uh, and grow. Things ran here up to 2009, 2010, January. We had to move here to our new home at Moikliof. So let us move guys and see our new home. Welcome to CSCC Calvary Seventh Wood Community Church, our home. Hi, my name is Lucas Mukara, and I serve in the finance team. 
Uh, my name is uh, Ritu Metsumatsaneng. I serve in uh, three departments. It's the kids ministry, uh, the Sunday school kids, and uh, secondly, the usher, ushering department. And thirdly, I am part of uh, the men's uh, department in the admin work. Hi, Saint. My name is Cindy Masigane. I am currently serving at the Compassion and, Com Compassion and Care Unit as well as uh, Intercession Team. Uh, my name is Ngidi Zwani. Mm. I've served so many portfolios in this church since the inception of Yakereke. My name is Wandi Lilagude. I'm currently the worship team leader at CSCC. My name is Omulemo Job, and I serve in the kitchen and welcoming team here at church. Uh, my name is Peter Zituna. I'm currently serving in the praise and worship team. My name is Katiaho Asish, and I serve as the youth pastor currently. My name is Luzuko, um, Luzuko Baloi, and in terms of where do I serve at church, sure, more like where haven't I served. Uh, but currently, uh, I'm a deacon here at church, and I think the main areas of my serving is um, the ushering team um, and also in just uh, uh, what's that management roles as well. So I'm with finance, I'm with uh, the building and maintenance team as well. And I'm one of those guys who can serve where there is a gap. So if there's a spot and assistance is needed, I'm that guy that just jumps in. But those are my major points of focus right now. I've been here for 20 very beautiful long years. Uh, fondest memory of God a lot, uh, but I think it's having the opportunity to serve in almost all departments. So the one time I was serving in the worship team is a temp sort of. So someone went on meeting to leave, so I just needed to fill in the post. And we went to Spread View, impromptu trip. We go there, um, there's a concert I didn't know. They just paid for me. You know those days when there's a concert, we have to buy the CD of the person that was singing. So when we come back, we just stopped on the highway, on the side of the road. Full blast, started dancing. But I'm thinking, we were not really conscious of, is it safe? But it was just so free, it was so beautiful. Um, unfortunately, the, my term came to an end, but it's just one of those things I like, yo, I thank God. Um, and service in general, because by serving through different departments, then I, I actually discovered what is my grace, um, where do I really love to serve, and that's why I ended up now in the service um, finance team. I've been in CSCC now for an approaching uh, four years, uh, but precisely I've been in CSCC for three years. My fondest memory is coming to CSCC, and that was like a mid-year mid towards uh, the last quarter of the year. Uh, being invited to the Young and Yielded, and I came back then as a guest. And the fondest memory of that entire event was experiencing the home affection of the ministry. And secondarily as well, the sound doctrine that was coming from this ministry. I knew at that point that this is my home and I ought to be grounded here. I've been with the church for 30 years. Like, it is 30 years today. I'm 30 years old in this church, too. Uh, my memorable uh, instances, Mukereking, there are so many. Because you can imagine, since we started 30 years ago, I've been here day one. And to, memor to have the best memory, it's just going to be difficult. But yo, I remember we had the first wedding. La Ekaya. And Sasi Sangene, Sasi Sangene, as a small church, we were not so many, but we wanted to make this to happen. And in Eleli Nyalo La Hadi Beila, and we had to travel to Poloko Aneko Muleti, and we had kumbis, and you know, we were four kumbis in the church, and everybody was there, and Kori, we wanted to show who we were as the motto, and this motto has long been there. Yahore, no one stands alone. So even on that wedding day, Lahadi Beila, we wanted to say, no one can stand alone. And we attended that wedding 
everybody but everybody who was in the church. He was in that kumbi and we were celebrating Lebat Wahadi Beila. And that was the memorable, memorable moment, Emunati. Another memorable moment, Enes Emunati. It was the death. Yeah, the brother one Tate Mbele. And Tate Mbele was our finance manager, Momo Kereke. And we traveled to the place called Oper de Cop. Everybody whom you know as a church, again, after this motto, Yahore, no one stands alone. We, we were all in one accord and in one heart to support the Mbeles. We traveled to Perdekop. I remember it was early in the morning, run about before, and then we came to another small town, and then we went there, and then Rabastoka out to Kakofi. We stocked them out, and the traveling was still there. So my memories, they were sweet and sour because we handled the we also handled Tamafu and but it was it's it's just a beautiful thing to be here. Here it's home. Here it's home. If 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 you don't know where home is, come to CSCC. This is home. Uh, I joined CSCC, it was towards the beginning of COVID 2020 before COVID started. Um, so it's been four years, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, my fondest uh, memory of CSCC, one, I think first we have very loving parents, one. But for me, when I joined uh, during the time, it was during COVID, so the church wasn't very much full, but what I noted was the sound doctrine of the teaching of the Word of God. I think um, maybe it has to do with me. I came to a church when I was already a bit matured in terms of uh, I was a, a bit out of the age of being a teenager in a sense that uh, my relationship, I think since I've joined here, has always been intentional about my work with God, where it was not just about um, me coming to church and doing activities, but it's all about how can I be a kingdom representative in every space where I'm at, where God has put me in. I've been at CSCC since its inception, and my fondest memory is actually COVID. During, um, there was a time when we just came back and we were yeah just coming back and just seeing the response and i think the worship team had been rehearsing preparing for us coming back and when you know it, at that time there were a lot of um, legalities or laws saying that you know at a specific age so your elders did not come back and it was mostly you know your young ones that could come back i think that first those first few sundays for me was, yeah, was, was quite, they were quite impactful. And I saw faithfulness even to the empty building, but faithfulness to God. I've uh, been at CSCC for the past 10 years, since 2014. Uh, I think our fondest, my fondest moment of the church um, is to see the growth and transformation that has actually um, happened during, throughout the years. And um, yeah, so my fondest moment of the church um, is seeing the church grow. Um, mainly on my side, I think uh, the worship team, um, yeah, we've actually grown quite well. And obviously, I mean, um, seeing families, seeing um, some of my friends get married. And uh, I think maybe the best one is having a daughter. <laughs> Um, the first time I came to CSCC was June 2022, so that means I've been here for roughly two years or a little over two years. And I think my fondest memory, it's a recurring memory, not of an event, however, it's how loving and welcoming the church is and how they are so rooted um, on their scripture of servanthood. There's so much servanthood in the church and it's something that's recurring and it's something that I hold very dearly to my heart. Um, so I've been at CSCC for 20 years. It's actually 19 years and a couple of months. Maybe it could be, I don't know, seven, six, 10 months. I can't remember specifically. So I rounded off to 20 years. And um, my fondest memory 
Uh, it's been so many, right? But I think my fondest memory has to be um, the one time we had a, a youth service and uh, me and, uh, and a friend of mine, Udi, decided that, you know what, we are gonna rap. And can, you can imagine, you know, these high school kids who decide that they wanna rap in church. Um, it wasn't a common thing back then. I mean, this was in 2004. And I think it was the fondest memory because we really surprised people in terms of the fact that we were rapping in church, but we weren't doing the rap that people were expecting, you know, that you hear on the radio, but we were actually rapping about God, rapping about the word. I wish I could remember those lyrics, you know, but uh, it's been a while. So that was actually my first fondest memory. I've been at CSCC for 17 years. I think the year was 2008 when I first came to CSCC. My fondest memories of CSCC, I would say, would be, uh, there's quite a lot of them. Um, I think the coming together of the church, um, particularly where we would have events, I remember very well uh, when we had weddings, you know, we'd, uh, everyone would just come up uh, and uh, support. Yeah, that's one thing about CSCC. There's a lot of support from the church, whether it's weddings, funerals, uh, everyone in the church would come together and, uh, you know, uh, make the work go, if I may put it that way. Um, in a very beautiful way, I've grown. Um, I've grown not only in church, but in my personal um, journey. I've grown to know that you don't have to do things that people can see. You can still serve, nobody sees you, but as long as your works will impact those that are around you. And I also love the fact that um, I've, I've come here as I am, and I serve as I am, and I've been loved as I am and I'm able in return to love people as they are. So that's how I've grown and I appreciate so much. Uh, the impact of CSCC over my life, uh, it's uh, two things specifically. Uh, firstly, is that CSCC has helped me become very grounded and not only grounded in the knowledge of the truth, but grounded as an individual. Uh, before I came here, I wasn't really grounded. I didn't have a fixed church that I could comfortably call home. Uh, I'm at a place of comfort and my spirit is at rest and I can call CSCC home. So that's the first part of CSCC that impacted me a lot. And the second impact of CSCC specifically was a knowledge of the word. Uh, I've always been a lover of the word. CSCC has a consistency that I struggle to find in most places. So the consistency really does well in relishing my spirit and keeping me here. And those are the two impacts that CSCC has had on me. First things first. Thirty years after that is not the point. Spiritually, the growth, your spirit, saka. But this, the growth of your spirit, some of the things say, you want to open the song, you want to get a little bit. Dafita or Henneke Sampanike Lingwana, Neki Bon, Neki Nahana Bongwana, Kiki Zadilo Bongwana. Now I'm a grown up man, Kiki Zadilo differently. So Nami really, Oku Kolwa, Guami, Nuxala, Guami, La, Gulenzao. When do we see him visit a gang on or Unkulunkulu, he move, he mati, Ugusi Ungbani? And I don't regret it that time because the Spirit of God is so powerful in this church when you listen and you want to take it in. The teachings are so vast that you have just to open your heart and take them in. And in Bella, growth just comes automatically if that is the case. Uh, it has impacted my life in a sense that um, uh, I've always been an intercessor, but I don't think I've always been a consumer of the word like I am. So I, it has impacted me in terms of, I think, just being intentional about reading the word because you can intercede, but if your prayer is not full of the word, therefore you are also wasting your time. So for me, I think 
I thank God it was a strategic move that he brought me to this church so that I believe I can carry more influence. So, Because if you are an intercessor, but you are also full of the word, I believe that God therefore can do amazing things through you. It's my destiny, the gospel, and the word of God is my destiny. And CSCC has given expression to that. Uh, yeah, to that gift, that that call that God has given me. Yo, Ngozi. <laughs> My life has been impacted um, through spiritual growth. Um, I mean, I remember before I came here, um, not that I didn't love God, but um, what I found CSCC to be was, um, it's more focused on, on the Word of God, the pure Word of God, and it's delivered um, truthfully so that you are able to understand and, and it, it actually helps you grow as a person. And I've seen growth in my family and I, like I said, I've also seen growth with the friends and the people that, I, that I'm close to and around. Yeah. My life, more so on my spiritual life, um, I have grown so much, mainly because of the word that we get here in the house. Um, it's so rooted in the the actual doctrine of the Word of God and my relationship with God, even with serving Him, it has been more so of serving Him from a place of knowing as opposed to serving because it's something that we normally see at church. So it has impacted me a lot with servanthood and having a very intentional and consistent relationship with God. Uh, I think coming to CSCC as a young man, I was fairly young um, when I first met uh, Dr. Maliki, um, it grounded me, if I may say, over the years. Uh, I found firm grounding uh, in CSCC through the teachings, solid teachings of the word. Um, it's, it's not a church with gimmicks, but it's a church that has got uh, sound doctrine uh, teachings, and that's one thing that has kept me uh, through the years. I've been, uh, I would say I've been out of church for a few years, but um, when, I, when I came back, I still found a place in the church uh, because of the teachings from way back. Um, so yeah, I'd say the church has got a solid teaching of the sound doctrine of uh, Jesus Christ. The CCS village, it's a village that will be taking care of the vulnerables. And at this point in time, we are focusing on the orphans and the destitute children. That is part of the CCS village and we are looking at having homes for them. And we are looking at having a school within the village, a primary school. And we are looking at actually having a preschool for those kids that will be here. And we intend to build homes for them so that uh, those kids are in a home environment, not a dormitory likes, but a home environment which will be having a mother of the house and the father of the house so that they grow up in a homely environment. And of course, this place where we are for now, it will be used as a hall, a community hall for the community because there will be a church also that will be built uh, you know, in this village. From the inception of the ministry, when the pastor had a vision to start a ministry, besides the preaching of the gospel, which was the main reason, God laid in his heart to take care of the vulnerables, as I said before. And the vulnerables in the context that we had at the time, it was the children, the orphans, and, and the elderly people, because elderly people are being neglected. So we were looking at that. So it is from the heart of the visionary 
to take care of those vulnerable. And that can also expand to other things, you know, for instance, uh, women that are being abused to create a home for all those who are vulnerable. That is the heart of the visionary, besides also preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, because we, we do understand that while we are preaching the word, the people also need to be taken care of. That is the purpose, and that's, it started from the inception of the ministry. I think, uh, you know, looking back at the 20 years and what we have done actually within this uh, aspect of the CCS, the, the village, we adopted because, you know, you, you can have a passion for something, but if you don't know what is, it, it entails, it might, you might be taking something that actually you don't have a, an insight in. So what we did, we adopted a home as a church that we adopted for about 15 years. No, no, if I'm correct, 10 years. We adopted Pihela, an orphanage, which was a, in Silverton. And in that orphanage, the church really invested. You know, we, we, we were so involved in it annually, and we upgraded the place so that we can have an understanding what the children without uh, the orphans, what are, what is it that they're going through? What are the requirements? So being involved in that uh, orphanage actually gave us more insight of what we are looking forward to. And it increased the desire to take care of these uh, uh, children that need uh, parenting, that needs uh, help. And we are looking forward to that one day we will also be able to extend to the elderly people, because elderly people nowadays are, are, are really not taken care of. And we hope that God will also help us. And we are looking forward to it. And we believe God, we trust God, that he will uh, raise up resources, give resources, raise men and women who will take care of the vision, carry it forward. And it will be a village in years to come. I'm pretty right now, I've served more uh, portfolio and it's uh, exactly what the church is uh, about. Uh, I was leading that portfolio. Yeah, yeah, and everything. Pehela was my baby. I was doing all that for over 10 years. I've been doing that from the inception, her that Pehela until Honayanu. And like Mamrit and Abulela, we have upgraded the place. We have done so many things. There was a time where we even helped like the salaries that the caregivers. So that was who we were and looking at the values like and even what was in the heart yamuruti ka ntho tsakereke words to young people is serve god now there is no better time to serve god it is now seek him now and not just serve him physically when people see you but even behind closed doors seek him and seek to have a relationship with god now in your youth my message to young people is that invest in knowing who god is and who he says you are because when you know those two things you wouldn't wish to be anything else and because of those two things then you move in a confidence of knowing that you know God and you are known by Him. And I think that's the one knowledge, especially in our time, that will carry you consistently in spite of, you know, um, situations that, yeah, that can try to throw you off. Just remember that that's the one constant.